Uh, this is myself, Stephen Healy in Wiltshire in England, and Tina. Hello, Tina. <laughs> Hello, Stephen. It's another Tuesday, <laughs> and we're back with another show. I just want to check that we are actually live, just to be sure. We and, are. Uh, I see it. Okay, I see it too. <laughs> so there we are. That's that done. We're live. That's the first heard love with, and uh, lively will now share out the show. Uh, if you're watching from uh, the live, sorry, the Ivers group, then click the link above and you come straight to the Be Live in Five page. If you're watching on my profile, you can do the same. And I'm about to post the link to uh, join us on camera because if you want to join us on camera today, then you're more than welcome to. In fact, there are going to be a lot of people on camera next Monday, are there not? Oh yes, for the Be Live, Be Livers, not Be Livers. Be live TV <laughs> birthday bash, which is the Be Livers also. <laughs> we, well, we're, we're happy that we have two shows, uh, and Turbury is joining us. Welcome to the show. This is Tina and myself. Oh, sorry, uh, we're in. <laughs> we're I didn't turn my off. Sorry. <laughs> okay, we're in party mood uh, because next Monday is Be Live TV birthday, and uh, we're looking forward to that. Um, because we've two shows, 10 a.m. Uh, in the morning, Eastern, and 6, 10 p.m. in the evening. And uh, we'd like you to join us for those. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be an interesting day because it's a long day, isn't it, really? Yeah, people should check out the, the BeLive.TV Facebook page quite often throughout that day because there's going to be shows by different people um, all day long from what time in the morning <laughs> till 2 a.m.? Oh, it's it's from, from 8 a.m., until uh, 2 a.m., I think, which is quite a, that's, you know, and the thing is that. Uh, Hi, Maria. <laughs> yeah. Hello, I, Maria. I, nice to the, see you. The interesting thing about the birthday bash is there's going to be a lot of shows that are bite-sized. Um, so if you've got 20 minutes to tune in, then you can catch a couple of different shows. Um, these shows are going to be um, primarily 10-minute spots. There are a couple of longer spots. Our shows are half an hour for the BeLivers moderators. Um, but the rest, I think, are 10 minutes, unless there are some other longer ones. Do you know? Do we we don't have a schedule, do we? I wish we'd we get a schedule that they would publish out so people could know when to tune in for the people they want to see. Yeah, I, I was asked twice yesterday, and I, I'm clueless. I know <laughs> Jeff is clueless. We've, we've no idea. What I do know is that it might be tomorrow. And we're joined by uh, Debbie Burroughs. So let's bring David on the air. And so, so Debbie, good afternoon, David. Well, good afternoon to both you. Of course, Stephen, <laughs> I, I see you all the time. But uh, Tina, it's nice to see you. Yeah, it's been a minute. How are you, David? <laughs> <laughs> I'm great. I just finished another broadcast, and then you guys popped up. And you know me. I don't turn down a chance to be on camera. So... <laughs> I think we all have that affliction. <laughs> it's part of what we do, right? Yes. It's nice to yeah. hear you guys talking about the the B Live celebration coming up on uh, Monday, and I was just talking about that with uh, I was doing a, a mentorship just now with Mark Curran. Uh huh. Uh, yep. And um, so we just spent uh, those fifteen minutes turns into an hour, but that's okay. Yeah, that always <laughs> happens too. But that's so great, though. It means it's working. So, yeah, so David's talking about the Be Live in Five mentorship program, which has been going for how many months now, Stephen? Five? It has, yes. And we still consistently get, um, you know, people asking for a mentorship. Not as many as we thought, but I think that's just because we did such an awesome job with the course that they don't need us when we're done. <laughs> yeah, get rid of the course. No. <laughs> the, the course is, is getting that close to having two and a half thousand students. So no, we can't we can't remove it. Well, and <laughs> and I do have to say, as one of the mentors, thanks to both of you because I know you both worked really hard at um, putting that course together. It's not just sitting down and record and start talking. There's a lot of planning and layout that goes to that. So it's made us other mentors look really good. <laughs> <laughs> well, We're we all have good. to thank you all for your time because. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, but I, you know, what, speaking of that though, it's great a tool as a mentor as well because when somebody reaches out to me and asks me some questions, the first thing I do is I say, "Have you looked at the course yet?" Because a lot of times, 
Uh, not that I have a problem giving people my time, but a lot of times it will save time. Here, watch this. And once you get through that, then come back to me with some more questions. Write them down. I tell people, write down your questions. And then it also shows a little initiative on their side of things too, right? So, well, it's uh, been fun to see some of the people who've taken our course and or you know, the mentoring go on and do some really successful things with with BeLive.TV. So we need to, we probably need to get some case studies together and get some yeah. some feedback and testimonials from those people who, so if you're watching and you did the course, let us know <laughs> so we can go watch your broadcast and see what you're doing. That, that's a great idea because being disco discoverability is still a problem. So if you let us know in the student group or in personal message, that's a great idea, Tina. We'll go with that one, won't we, David? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> I need follow up course number two or something. I don't know. It, well, it's officially in the works. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's waiting on me. <laughs> <laughs> something there right there told course, me. <laughs> <laughs> there, there is a course two on the way. And welcome to everybody who's watching us today. This is uh, Tina and Stephen with the live talk show. Thank you, and, Maria. And thank you, Maria. We much appreciate it. Yeah. And, uh, well, she's. Uh, we've. I've sent uh, messages to Maria, and hopefully, she's going to be a guest on one of our shows coming up because she is a master at Facebook advertising and, oh. and has the numbers in dollars to prove her success. And so, I, I watch her frequently to to learn more to share Maria, with Maria. I'll be. I'll be contacting <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah, you and me she, both. She has. Uh, she has the the. Um, She's got it figured out. So, and she's fun and engaging, which is part of it, you know, David and, and Stevie. Now, that's that's probably the biggest piece of the puzzle. Is you have to be, it, you have to resonate with your audience, or they're not going to watch you. You could have, you could be able to tell somebody, you know, I can in five minutes, I can tell you how to make a million dollars, and if they don't like listening to you, <laughs> tune in for five. You can minutes, do that in five minutes. Out. I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I can do it right now. I can tell you how to do it. You want to know? You're yeah, on the, you're on the edge, <laughs> look, at, look, at, look, the suspense. It's quiet right now. Here's how you make a million dollars. Get one million people to give you a dollar. <laughs> or that's, that's, yeah. get a half a million people to give you two dollars. <laughs> When you put it in that perspective, it doesn't sound that hard, right? Right. <laughs> no, no. But if it was, if it was that easy, then yeah. yeah. Well, no. Well, you see, you know that you. I know what you were going to say. You were going to say if it, were, if it were that easy, everybody'd be doing it. Um, well, Robert, that goes both ways. You can marry a woman that has ten million dollars and divorce her. You'll have to make the women the gold diggers. Go digging men out there too. Oh boy, boy, we're we're gonna hit Facebook news. We're encouraging people to get married and then divorce for money. <laughs> That's hilarious. I, I love it. Robert Roberts asked me. Asked, he's asking people to give their thoughts on 2017 and 2018 and the highlights of 2017. I'm going to take a frame, picture frame with that in it. No, I won't. I'll be good. <laughs> Uh, yeah, back to uh, right. Okay, I'm going to drop down for a moment, and we're going to bring our friend up, um, Mr. Robert Myers. So, excuse me. Hey, Jeff me. Adams is out there too. Hey, Jeff. Right. Hey, Hello, Jeff. Jeff. Happy be belated in... birthday. <laughs> I'll be back in a few. He's left us. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, there he is. Hey, look, <laughs> Good morning, Robert. It look, looks like I get, it looks like I get to join the cool kids. <laughs> You're in the right group, man. <laughs> so, oh, what have you been up to, Robert? Oh, gee, I've been I've been busy on all sorts of things. So most mostly non uh, non live streaming, though. I just finished my hundred and first consecutive one last night, and I'm gonna start taking a break. I called it my, it was the end of the century challenge. <laughs> and uh, I called it, I called it my Dalmatian day. 101 <laughs> Dalmatians, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so. So 101 um, consecutive 
wow. consecutive days. Yeah. Yeah. Well, congratulations. Since, since July since July 1st. So um, that's a great I blame day. It on Jonathan Tripp and David Vaughn. Yeah, I'm I didn't, sorry? Even, I didn't even make it to July 1st. Is that your birthday? I, I said, yeah, July 1st is a great day for two reasons. <laughs> One, it's Canada's birthday yeah. where I live, and it, yes, it's my birthday too. So, <laughs> I come cool. in with a bang. That's, you got a twofer. <laughs> I, it's hard to have a party on my birthday because everybody's else Excellent. somewhere else. <laughs> <laughs> that's like having yeah, your birthday yeah. on Christmas or something. Yeah, that's right. I make it work. Our, our, so your audience, Robert and David. Did either one of you um, submit a proposal to to be on the? Be live and five or not be live and five the be live TV birthday bash. I did, yeah. I did, yeah. Okay. Have you heard anything yet? Yeah, but I haven't no, heard. I don't. No. <laughs> I don't suspect I'll hear anything. We keep waiting to hear who who else doing what, yeah. and we don't know anything either. We're in the dark as well. So. <laughs> well, I yeah, I'm glad to hear that because I felt like I'm missing <laughs> something. Where the hell is the information? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure they they're they're busy figuring it out, and we'll probably yeah we'll probably find out Sunday at midnight. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I, oh yeah, that's yeah. perfect. Um, no, I think you know. I wonder if they if they just got inundated and and received a lot more than they expected. I'd be curious to know how many proposals were actually turned in. Yeah, well, and then there's that process of of filtering through. I mean, let's 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 be honest. There's good, bad, and ugly, yeah. right? So it, uh, yeah. that's I'm not, amongst the ugly, so I don't expect uh, <laughs> to be selected. <laughs> so, well, plus well, it, it, with the unreliability of my connection, you know, I'm having to go through my my iPhone here, and yeah, and uh, so you know, where where are you? The broadcast from. I'm in uh, the Bay Area of California, but I'm on ATT Uverse. Because okay. my well, it's it's a long issue. It's contractual thing, and so next month we get to change ISP. So I should be in much better stead. Right, right. And uh, hopefully, <laughs> I hope so. Yeah, that's I hope the problem. So. You don't really know until you get it. <laughs> I'm curious to uh, has anybody ever uh, talked to anybody or had anybody on from Ireland? I have. Yeah, yeah. we had a. Um, we had a lady on, uh, actually on our funeral home show that we do. Um, she makes these funeral pins, which are, they're just small pins, and they can be either a cross or a dove. And they're for the immediate family members to wear so that people know who the immediate family members are. Oh, nice. And oh. So, yeah, they're really cool um, idea, nice idea. But we had her on the show, and it was no different than anybody else. I mean, you know, yeah, you okay. always have the possibility of running into some pixelation or the right, voice right. dropping out, but yeah. um, we had a good show with her. Oh, good. Cause I'm, I'm, uh, I just did a, a <clears throat> pardon me, an interview, a recorded interview last night with a young lady who's a boxer in our city and she's off to Ireland. So she was going to, going to oh. contact us because I've done Australia and that was, that was challenging. Yeah. Yeah. No, no I've, know. I've done India and Pakistan. Oh Yeah. Um and Australia. That's that's about it. Yeah. Yeah, we we have a day oh, and, who's and, of... and Britain, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Hi, hi Carinders out there. We'll say hello to Carinder yeah. Thanks for watching, Carinder. <laughs> but you know, one of the Be Live and Five um talk show hosts and and um mentors is Adair Palmer and she's out of Australia and she seems to have really stable, good connection. Yeah, that's she... that's who I interviewed actually. Okay. Very Who cool. was that? I didn't hear that. <laughs> Adair Palmer. Oh, Adair. Yeah, yeah. you know Adair. Yeah. Um, and then um, I know, and Stephen can bring himself back in here and tell you the person's name because now I can't think of the person's name. Go ahead. I know he has, <laughs> um, you know, he has a colleague that, that live streams from Scotland a lot. Oh, I Peter. mean, from Ireland. Oh, from, I, from, I, yeah. from Ireland or Scotland? Yeah, I know there's Scotland, but I think there's Ireland as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hey, Stephen, pop back up. I got to go uh, find my way to the barber shop. My, I, I'm a do. <laughs> They're not making a lot of money off you, are they? No, not very much. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you. Anyway, good, good to see you guys. Good, Bye, good to be, be good to be amongst the cool kids. <laughs> Take care. 
Bye. <laughs> I, never knew, a... I never knew I was a cool kid. <laughs> <laughs> so do you do you have a friend that live streams from Ireland as well? Uh yes, we do. Uh lady by the name of the name escapes me too. It's Kevin. Is that what well, Kevin, Kevin's in, Kevin Arrow's in the UK, okay. uh, and I know there aren't too many um, sort of in the UK at the moment. I'm hoping that more and more will join us. <laughs> and uh, on that note, oh, Kevin Scullion, there you are. There's a man who knows. Thank you, Corinda. And <laughs> hi, Fernando. It's good to see you. Yeah, I mean, it is. We're waiting, hopefully, tomorrow, uh, because I was speaking to Irene earlier. They should publish the list of shows for next Monday, because if they don't, there is a the closer. It, I don't think it'd be Sunday night, David. The closer <laughs> it gets, to, the closer it gets to next Monday, the bigger the problem is if you're actually inviting somebody to be on with you. Yeah, or if if you haven't. You know, if they're giving you a time to be on and you can't make that time uh, because our times have been changed, a couple, you know, a couple of different times already. So, yeah, I imagine that it's a huge undertaking just to juggle and figure out who can go where in the schedule. Indeed. I'm glad I'm not the one having to do it. <laughs> no, I, I think it's a team effort uh, between Irene, Daniel, Sophia and everybody else in Haifa. Um, but we're hoping to hear hopefully tomorrow. Now, I just want to change topic for a moment because there is one that, that came up this week. And I think we should all have our say on this. And it is becoming more and more important as uh, the people who are using BeLive.TV are getting younger and younger. I'm thinking here of uh, young musicians who are coming live on air on BeLive.TV and safety on the shows because you can't, when you go public to a page, it's public. And if somebody makes a comment uh, on that page whilst you're live, you can't do anything about it because you can't react quick enough. You're actually doing the show. You're not actually following all the comments unless you the producer and watching out at Corny Ryan. So uh, my tip on this, on safety on shows, is if after the show you go through the comments and you find a comment which you don't want to have on your show again, Simply go to your page, go to settings, go to uh, people and pages, and you can then block anyone from watching your show. You're not blocking them personally. They will never know. They just will not be able to watch a live show on your page again. Now, whether you warn them first is up to you, but if it's an extreme case, just block people on your page and you'll have a better show for it. Your audience will enjoy it more because the, the thing is that, Whilst we're not going to always be family friendly, we should at least be respectful and certainly respectful of the people who are actually appearing on the screen. Yep. So. Yeah, I've noticed that generally when you have someone who's just being an ass, you don't have to deal with it. Your audience will usually deal with it for you. Um, so if you have a heckler, you have someone that's just being ugly, before you ever see it, you're probably seeing responses from the audience that's viewing and I think most young people are tech savvy enough and, you know, hopefully parents have given them the tools that they need to understand, you know, their reach as far as if this is going to just your personal page or if it's going out to everyone in the world. And generally, if you're publishing on your personal page, it's different than if you're publishing on a band yeah. page. Mm -hmm. um, so I, now I think young people are, they're native to this. So they probably understand it and use it better than we do. I'm not sure that they need our advice. We might need theirs. <laughs> so yeah. I have, you know, my two youngest boys are, well, one just turned nine and the other one will be 11 soon. They've been online since they were two, like literally online gaming online with other people. Um, and so, you know, they know what they can and can't say, what kind of information they can share. That they can't tell people where they live and that kind of thing. And so hopefully other parents have, have done that if they're allowing their children to, to do live streaming or play online games with other people. Yeah, well, and from a parent's perspective, uh, it, you just kind of said it, it. It really comes from the responsibility of the parents. It's like before computers, you, you mean, you, you, you taught your kids, you know, say no to drugs, right? That's, you have those, conver you have those, 
those awkward conversations. And that's, I think that's, that's a part of it with this. Um, one of the things, and, and it, uh, I'll talk about from, uh, from uh, a broad, let's talk about from a broadcaster's point of view, for example, I've interviewed several young people who are musicians, uh, you know, like Lucy and uh, Emma, who are starting their show uh, or started their show Saturday. You know, I've had them on um, and I've had uh, a list, a long list of performers who are under the age of 18. Mm -hmm. So I make sure I have a form actually in an email that I, I standardly set out. I make sure that I have mom and dad's permission. And I make sure that mom and dad are off camera or on camera. I don't care, but they're in the room when I'm doing the interview. Yeah. And it's unfortunate to, that we yeah. have to do that, but that's a reality. Yeah, it is. It is. But there are things that you can do and uh, yeah. sound advice. Yeah. Well, I think and, and, and I, you can have somebody, sorry, I, I just um, back to uh, the, the nasty comments on a show. If you have someone that you trust, uh, give them access to your Facebook page and, and just have them monitor it while you're doing the show. And if there's a comment that pops up, tell them to delete it. Indeed. Uh, right. To catch up with the comments that we've had today, uh, Alfredo is saying uh, on StarCraft, my son learned how to build <laughs> nuclear missile weapons in the game. I hope he's not going to carry on doing that. <laughs> That would not be good for us. We have enough with what's going on at the moment. Uh, and a comment from uh, Corinda has shared this out, which means that I can now put on the screen our call to action, which is if you're enjoying the show, please share. It does enable us to reach a wider audience and we're eternally grateful. And back to a question from Corinda, just around this section up. Uh, He's got a new iPad. I've got a new show, but I want to use the iPad for Be Live. Can I do that, or how would I connect it? Ah, no. Should be able to. Right. Okay. If you use, if you use, I earlier this week uh, tried out um, Be Live TV on Chrome on an Android tablet, hosting the show. And it works. So if I can do that, you can now host the show, hopefully, on your iPad. I would try it out. That's the that's yeah, the only let way. Let us to know. Let us know. So if did works you create? Well. Did you create it on the iPad, or you created it? I I, I cheated. I I well, I created it on uh, the screen here on the desktop. Right. And then I sent myself a link as host to the show or. He live sent it to me. Mm -hmm. I clicked the link and I told it to open up in the browser and it opened up in Chrome. I could see everything on the screen in landscape mode and I could bring people on screen. I could uh, bring photographs on screen. The only thing I can't do, couldn't do, which you don't understand why is I can't screen share. But after, after, if, after the show, just try it. Set, set up a show mm -hmm. and use the host invite. Now, I don't know how official this is, um, but I know it works. So interesting. Well, I know from experience using, and I haven't used um, to try to host either um, either tablet or a phone, actually. I haven't tried to host with either one. I've always done desktop hosting. But I do know that if on your device, your, um, your default browser is not Google Chrome, if it's something else, when you click on that link like Stephen did, it's going to open it in your default browser and it won't work. So make sure that you're opening it in Chrome um, to test it out. Yep. Okay. It has no. to be, it has to be Chrome. Yeah, it will not work. Even your guests trying to come in, if they're, you know, the link that you sent them, I've had several people who, I don't know why, but for whatever reason, they still use Safari as their default browser, <laughs> um, you know, that it's opening up in Safari. And so they just have to copy and paste it. Um, I want to take a moment here, um, Stephen, we were going to have a guest with us today and Karen Glasser was going to be on to talk about the little white lie. And um, she's not with us because there are wildfire fires yeah. out in California. And so she has no internet, no cell, nothing right now. It's really bad. And so just wanted to, you know, let, let you guys know that our thoughts are with you out there and um, yeah. with the fires. It's just, 
I don't know if it's because we're more connected or what, but I, I don't remember there being so much going on all the time in the, you know, in the world of wildfires yep. and the hurricanes. Yeah. And she was, a, she was supposed to be a guest on my show tonight, actually. And she sent me an email yesterday. Uh, yeah. So I can't imagine. Yeah, that's, that's, well, all of that's, you know, all that earthquakes, hurricanes, everything's terrifying. But um, for me, I have a, a big fear of fire because my house burned down when I was a little kid, when I was seven. Oh. So having that like lingering around me or coming toward me, that's like one of the most terrifying. I think I'd rather be in the hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it is. Uh, the fact that we're closer to the news we're closer we're n well the, the fact is that wherever in the world something happens the odds are that we know somebody right. yes yeah uh and hello everyone from be live in five now we've got two guests here hello april <laughs> well the three of us on screen i yeah. mean there's probably a, april <laughs> oh, oh, minute, it could be brigetti yeah, Brigetti, or, if that's you, hello. Or even a dare, right? It could be a dare. She's probably well, no, asleep. Uh, a dare should be asleep. It's, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's another sign of the planet. <laughs> yeah. But that's, that, we, we are so close to people. We, we know people around the globe. You know, we know that people talk about violence today, like, but we really live in one of the most nonviolent times in our history. It's just that we're so connected that we know every violent act that happens. Um, so yeah. it, it seems like there's more violence, but really, statistically speaking, there's not. Well, it's interesting, you know, with the, the technology. I, I was reading a, um, an article yesterday. There's um, Eric Alper, who's one of our, our big music guys here in Canada. Um, the musical group, The Zombies, way back in the day. Okay. Yeah, there yep. was a two duplicate. So they actually started out and then they broke up mm -hmm. because nobody was paying attention to them. And then a song came. I forget what song Stephen would sounds like he would know came out. And the promotional companies over the United States took them and created these two bands known as the Zombies. And they traveled. Uh, one of them was actually uh, one of the guys who's in ZZ Top now. Um, they traveled the United States as the zombies. And the original zombies over in, in your neck of the woods, Stephen, um, <clears throat> didn't even know. They didn't even know about it. Nope. Now, that was at a time you could get away with that. Mm -hmm. No, you can't get away with that now. <laughs> no. That no I chance. go to the bathroom. Everybody's going to know, right? <laughs> Well, we're talking about, do, do you actually use your phone in the bathroom uh, the other day? But we're not going uh, to. Yeah, <laughs> right, now, the, the zombies, uh, oh, it's it's the back of my, I, I'll think of it. If I think of it during the show, I'll actually post the song on. But, uh, yes, the zombies were, uh, I mean, the, the thing is that we actually remember so much music. Uh, no matter when we were born between 60s and today, we know of music from the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, noughties. Yeah, and it's part of our lives. Yeah, absolutely. I, I went to a play uh, back here at the beginning of the summer, Jennifer and I, uh, and it was called Li Live 60, well, what was it called now? Happy Happy 67 or something like that. I can't right, okay. But it was all music from 1967. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I, I was born in 69, so... But all that music um, is still around today. It's wonderful. Like, it's alive, and it's it's still, I mean, times are different, but they're kind of the same. You know what I mean? Like, um, people are, are it's, it's, it's really cool to see the music live so long, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Well, it really, it, I have, so I have five kids, as you all know, but you may not know that their age span is, so that's so my youngest is nine and my oldest is 27. Um, so I've got like this big span. It's really fun and interesting to check out their playlist. Oh, yeah. uh, because they have such diverse music interests. I don't have none of my children have like one specific genre that that's just all they listen to. Like they only listen to pop and they don't care about anything else. Their right. taste covers all genres. And 
every era that you can think of, even beyond the 60s, even some of the older stuff, the kids will listen to. I, the funniest the funniest song that I found on a playlist is my now 22 year old. Um, I was he was probably 16 when I was looking at his playlist and he had the um, the theme song from Growing Pains on his <laughs> and I'm like, you don't even know what Growing Pain. How did you even find this? <laughs> <Yeah, You know? laughs> It wasn't even there. It wasn't even around. <laughs> no, it wasn't. So I'm not sure how he found it. But he's like, it just touched my heart. So I put it on there. I'm like, okay. <laughs> it was discoverable. That's like my son, uh, uh, like Tom Cochran, right? Life is a highway. Um, but then when was it the first Cars? I think the Cars movie came out. And yeah. Was it Rascal Flats did a remake of it? Yeah, thanks. So. And my son is like, yeah, I don't care if Tom Cochran did it first. Rascal yeah. Flats is better because he was <laughs> this little watching cars. So, of course, yeah. So that's cool. Yeah, I, I, my kids usually um, usually like the original more than more than the remake of music um, and movies too. You know, we watched Rocky Horror Picture Show and we watched both um, <laughs> with, with my nine year old. He loved it, but he liked the he liked the original one better than right. the new. So, one. were you doing the time warp? Of course. <laughs> Speaking uh, of right. remakes, I finally I finally got to see it. I'm like a massive Stephen King fan. I've been fangirling over him since I was twelve. I started reading his books when I was twelve. Um, I'm like infatuated. <laughs> but uh, so I got to see the the remake, and I really like it. I think it's really good. Um, for which movie was that? For it. Oh, it. Oh, okay. No, I haven't seen it. Yeah, yeah I, I really think that I, I lean toward liking it more than the original, which is very unusual <laughs> for me with the Stephen King movie. Uh -huh. uh, at a time walk, Corinda, is when, well. <laughs> it's a dance <laughs> from, a, from a movie. <laughs> Google, okay. Google Rocky Horror Picture Show Time Warp. You'll yep. find it on YouTube. Oh. It's great oh, fun. <laughs> and, and just speaking of the zombies, the song that made them was a song called She's Not There. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Google. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? What? I just thought maybe you thought of that. No, no, no. I thought I'd get the answer in before the end of the show. <laughs> yeah, I don't uh, know if I know that song. You know, I'm, I can't. I don't know if I know a song by the title. Even newer songs. Like, you know, I'll ask, I asked Walker the other day what, you know, what some of his favorite songs are right now that he's listening to. And I was like, I don't know what that is. But when he played it, I was like, oh, okay, I know that. But for whatever reason, I don't connect the song with the title. <laughs> well, if, if I sang She's Not There For You, you wouldn't recognize it anyway. So I'm not I'll going there. <laughs> but Google it afterwards or YouTube it, you'll find it. She's Not There. Uh, so we could Time Walks and Alfredo was saying Music is Eternal. Um, I mean, that, and that, universal. <laughs> in, indeed, I mean that, that's that's something that we do have in common um, around the world is music, isn't it? Mm -hmm. yeah. International, I mean, yeah, worldwide, worldwide language, right? Right. Totally, totally. So, Simon and Garfunkel, anyone? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I heard the original. Um, no, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. You were there. Right, and a question, a question from Corinda to either of you. He knows I'm Android, so he's not asking me. Yeah, no, I'm Android uh, as well. Oh, right. I'm not even sure I should be talking to you guys. Hey, I can't, oh, I can't afford right, Apple. Okay. The only Apple I'm phone an iPhone. I have is my, um, my MacBook Pro, which I adore. It's my baby, literally. You can ask people yeah. if they touch it. I'm like, be careful, pack it in yeah. stuff and when you carry it. Um, so I'm, I love I've, always, I've always been well I was actually a Blackberry guy back in the day when texting was web based yeah. on your phone right yeah and then I went to I had an iPhone and then I, it dropped in water and the girl at the store talked me into a galaxy and I did that and hated it and I have <laughs> couldn't wait to get a new phone I've been iPhone ever since yeah. I loved my and, iPhone when I had Jennifer, it. Jennifer and Jason, my boy, they all have iPhones, so it works great for us. We yeah. Yeah. we all put our schedules in there and all that stuff. But uh, 
Well, I'm a fan. I just can't justify the expense when I have something. When I, I because I use my phone to talk on the phone. That's literally yeah. the only thing I use it for. <laughs> yeah. See, for me though, like, like I'm and Karinder, no, I'm not a. Uh, I'm an iPhone six S six S plus. Um, but I needed a big screen. Because I do a lot of like Stephen, you see me at the hockey games, right? Yeah. I'm like, that's all recorded, and then I sit down and I edit everything on my phone. So I mean, my phone's not a phone. Yeah, it, my phone's a it's 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 the wrong. We should call it an I thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, when I was you know when I was doing journalism um, and I was out in the field. You, you can't beat the cameras on the iPhones. I mean, they're amazing. Oh yeah. Like and, and so I loved having it and it was, it made sense for me to have it then, but now I really don't, I only use it to talk on the phone. So I can't justify that yeah. expense to my family. <laughs> and see it went for, for me phone. too. Well, like I say, for me, it's, it's a, it's a tool. Like it's a yeah. big tool for me. And when I do live streaming of a do live streaming of events, I use a, an, an iPad and iPhones as cameras. So I, I do mean, have an iPad. So that's, uh, <laughs> Yeah, and a lot of people. Oh, there's Al, uh, Alfredo saying, "I just use my iPhone to take pictures." I think a lot of people have, if they don't have a phone, they just have a camera. That's a. It was a phone at one time, yeah. I guess, right? Yeah, many computers, right? <laughs> my my 16 year old actually has an iPhone, uh, six or seven. I don't know. I think it's a seven. Okay. And he's he takes pictures with it all the time. They're awesome. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, listen, you two. I've I've got to run out of here, and uh, um, I've well, got some more more before, stuff to do. Before you go tonight, sure. you have a show. Oh yes. Well, Stephen and I have our show every uh, Monday uh, at twelve o'clock Eastern time. I had to step out yesterday because well, I had a hockey game to look after. Uh, but I my weekly live show is Tuesday nights, so tonight at eight o'clock Eastern. And I always have it's a musical guest or it could be a, it, it, it varies. It's just uh, real people, real stories, and real topics. Brilliant. Thanks for having me on, guys. I appreciate it. And uh, I'll be listening in the background as I work away at other things here. <laughs> Thanks okay. for joining Thanks us, David. David. See you soon. Right. Okay. Now, uh, this is Be Live in Five talk show with Tina and myself. If you want to join in, then you'll find the link to join us. I'm just going to post it again if I can find it. Now, this is the other thing that's changed, is that um, you can now have multiple agendas on BeLive.tv. And I'm juggling at the moment five different agendas. Um, and I found the right one. <laughs> so all I need to do now is copy the link. <clears throat> I've organized it so that um, I've got the main agenda which is uh, a welcome pack. So that says things like, welcome to the show, please share, and join us on camera. Yeah, and that's common to all shows. So that's one menu I've saved. And then I've got a separate menu for our talk show today, and another one for Blabbing for Britain. And it all works rather well. Because if you, if you see, this, this is how it works. This is the magic. If you were to mention our free course on belive.tv i can swap straight away and just go like that and then i can post a link yeah yeah do you so one of the things that we can do on on the live tv is share our screen and so this is putting steven on the spot so i don't know if he can do it or not but you recently did an update video on how to use the new agenda functions can we share that video uh, we can try. <laughs> if we can't, then we'll put a link in the in the comments so you can check out the video that shows you how to yeah. use these new functions that Stephen's talking about. Um, okay. Which I hadn't even thought, Stephen. I hadn't even thought about saving kind of generic agendas for those functions that you're just talking about. I was just thinking of the ability to be able to copy an agenda over. In case we didn't, in case you know, as we as often happens with us, we go off topic, and so then we have an agenda that we like to get to at some point, so we could copy it over to the next time we want to do a show. So I hadn't even thought about using it in the way that you just talked about. Well, it, it I thought about it, and I thought, well, it does work because you can have a common agenda which you use in all the shows, 
Well, yeah, there yeah. are certain things that we always talk about, like RB Live and Five Free Course. So, absolutely, that's a great idea. <laughs> and we talk about our YouTube channel. Yes. You find us on YouTube. You find us on Twitter. But that's by the by. But I mean, if you've got the uh, a show this week, then enjoy using the new agenda feature, and we'll post a link afterwards to the video, uh, which explains how to use it. Um, but this is, uh, hopefully, <laughs> it's Tuesday. So this yes. is the Be Live in Five talk show. Now, tomorrow, uh, we're going to give a shout out to Adair. Uh, Adair is on tomorrow. And she is on, well, it's early for me. It's 6.30 in the morning in the UK, 1.30 in the morning, Eastern time. Uh, but if you can catch Adair's show on Wednesday, uh, Adair is based in Adelaide in Australia, has a guest every week. And if you can't watch it live uh, so early in the morning, then do please catch the replay. You find it shared uh, in Belivers on the Belive in Five page. And well, everywhere we can share it. We shared it. And uh, she's building up. This is a good thing. Because we're actually promoting this, uh, Adair is making contact with more and more people in Australia. Because obviously the, the audience for a show which starts in Australia is Australian. Yeah, and well, the, it, I, I hope that um, BeLive.TV will start to do maybe some advertising and promotions through Facebook. I mean, Facebook advertising is amazing and the ability to be able to target, um, you know, by location. And by a lot of things, but specifically location is what I'm talking about. I hope that they'll start doing some promotions in in other parts of the country. I mean, we have a lot of users in the United States and the platform's really stable now. So I hope that they'll start to, to maybe do some advertising and promotions out that way. It would be helpful uh, because there are a lot of good broadcasts going totally unnoticed under the radar. And uh, that would be a good idea. And, uh, a question from Corinda, an observation from Corinda. Uh, Stephen and Tina, can you do a demo on Udemy? Um, we have. Uh, I did the uh, explanation of the new agenda yesterday uh, in a video, which you could have seen in BeLivers or on our BeLive in Five page, but it's now part of our free course on Udemy. So if you check out our free course on Udemy, and that's the title of it, well, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> That's basically what we call it. But if you check out this link, um, that will get you directly to the free course on Udemy. And uh, if you've already taken the course, you can skip to the part, to, to the new part. Um, if you took yep. the course, you should have actually gotten a notification that something new was added. Indeed, indeed. It's all, it's all magic. So the course link I've just posted, free course, all about BeLive.TV by Tina and myself, and the new section is already there. Uh, in fact, the new section was there half an hour after Joel announced it. So we're ahead of the game. In, when it comes to training, we try to keep ahead of the game, <laughs> right. not behind it. That's an in-joke, <laughs> but we'll, we'll leave it at that. And uh, Jessica. Uh, joins us. Hello, Jessica. And Jessica is saying, I'm excited to reach my global followers here in Los Angeles, but I follow us in the UK and South Africa. Well, in, indeed, because it is, we are, it is a global village, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I get flummoxed because you're in Tennessee, I'm in Wiltshire, Brigetti is in Cape Town, and Adair is in Adelaide. Yeah, and Dave is in Canada. And Dave is in Canada. Now, I was trying to get a time where we could meet up. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I got there's, there's a, a website uh, where you can sort of pick the cities. And I got mm -hmm. the four, four cities across the top and then the times over the next few days. And where you can uh, meet up, in other words, where you're actually awake, mm -hmm. uh, you've got to have a green. And there isn't a time when there are four <laughs> greens. There isn't. It doesn't exist. It doesn't work. <laughs> Well, we are truly right. international at Be Live and Five, <laughs> which is great for our audience because no matter where you are, you can find a show that's going to fit your schedule to be able to catch us live. And of course, there's always replay. I mean, most views come on replay anyway, so you absolutely can build an international audience. 
Um, you know, we have a lot of developers who have built international audiences. Oh yeah, that's that's very true, and, and it's it's available to everybody. And I just want to highlight the comment by Jessica, who loved the agenda <laughs> demo tutorial. Thank you. I, I just enjoy making them. Uh, it's great fun, and we enjoy doing the courses. And as we alluded to earlier, there's a second course on the way, um, and uh, it's just fantastic. We, we love being with BeLive.tv, and just a final reminder today, we don't want to go over the top, uh, but there is, um, it is the BeLive in T. <laughs> I'm going wrong now, Tina. <laughs> BeLive.tv birthday bash. <laughs> yes, I know. I've tried to say it the wrong way like four times, but yeah, it's right. BeLive.tv. Their birthday is coming up on October 16th. One year. It's flown by, hasn't it? It's I mean, amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I, I remember I I interviewed Daniel on the 17th of October 2016. And if you look at what we've got now, the quality of the video and the sound, there is no comparison. And we thought it was fantastic then. It's yeah. absolutely superb now. Um, so the BeLive.TV birthday bash, it's from 8 a.m. Eastern through to 2 a.m. Eastern. It's uh, Master of Ceremonies is Jeff Adams. Uh, so you'll see Jeff throughout the course of those 16 hours. Uh, somebody keep sending him coffee and cake. That'll keep him going. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll try our best as well. We'll give him a coffee IV. <laughs> <laughs> and you'll, you'll, you'll find Tina and I will be on at 10 a.m. Eastern and 6, 10 p.m. Eastern. So we're on twice that day. We're looking forward to it. And we're sorting out an agenda. And if you'd like to join us, you're more than welcome to do so. And, and we're hoping to get yeah. a schedule from BeLive.TV, hoping they'll pu publish a schedule so we'll know who's on when and what topics are being discussed throughout those 16 hours. Yeah, I mean, that, that, I mean, we can basically promote it. If we know what it is, we can promote it. And the other thing is that the people who've got shows can actually invite guests. Yeah, because you can't say, come and join me next Monday. You've got to say, when? So hopefully yeah. we'll promote tomorrow. <laughs> Just catching up for a moment, and Alfredo's saying you read uh, more than 75% of Facebook video is viewed by a replay. Well, that's it, a, it is, yeah, it's about yeah. three quarters. I think that's that's yeah. still accurate. Yeah. <laughs> I think that the live viewership numbers will will continue to go up as people become more accustomed to viewing live. Uh, well, it's a fact that the more you more live that you do, the more people will watch your show. Um, yeah, but. Majority of it is on replay, uh, so we do play for the replay as well. And Alfredo uh, asked in another comment if Facebook advertising really works. Absolutely. Ah. <laughs> um, if you need like proof with dollars, and um, go go watch Maria's videos. Um, I'll, I can post a link to Maria's page in the in the comments after the show. Um, she's figured out kind of the formula for, for Facebook videos. I mean, not Facebook videos, but Facebook um, advertising. I will say this, Facebook boosts is not the same thing as Facebook advertising. Boosting posts is not anywhere near as effective as advertising. Um, boosting posts just, boosting posts is great if you're trying to grow your page likes or, you know, the awareness of your page, if you're trying to boost for that reason. But if you're looking for conversions or sales, stop boosting posts, go into the Facebook advertising platform and start doing advertising. Exactly. We did, we, we did say that we we're going to advertise this show. I didn't actually get around to it. But, yeah. uh, no, we'll get there. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll try. <laughs> we'll that do. strategy we're building. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're, we're building our strategy. You catch uh, Tina and I on Thursday, 12 p.m. Eastern with Grow Your Live Tribe. We are growing a live tribe uh, on Facebook, on YouTube, and on Twitter. And uh, we'll give you an update on how we're doing on that. And hopefully be able to announce something special. Well, it's these days actually building an audience on Twitter is not as easy as it used to be. Because no, in, back in the day, <laughs> back in the day, if you followed somebody, they would follow you back. Now, if you follow somebody, they ignore you unless they know you. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, people have it's, gotten a lot more selective just because there's so much more out there. All right. And Brigitte is agreeing uh, that advertising does work. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
That's good. And uh, Robert's observing, I only boost my blog posts for views. Yeah, I, yeah well, you that, know, there's some really good articles out there and maybe we'll do a show on it at some point. Um, we're definitely going to have Maria on the show at some point to talk about advertising, but to specifically yeah. talk about the difference between boosting posts and Facebook advertising, some really good articles out there already. So just Google it and read it and it'll explain to you a little bit more about which one is good for what. They have two completely different purposes. Um, and I will say, I don't know that this is true because I haven't, um, I don't have a case study to prove it on in my own experience. I don't boost a whole lot of posts. But for some people, they're saying that once they boost posts, that their organic numbers go down if they don't continue spending money boosting. Right. So once you're in it, you can't you yeah. can't escape from it without taking a hit. Yeah, and, that, and I've heard that in a lot of different places. I've read it a lot. I've heard it from colleagues. Um, I don't know. Maybe Robert can speak to that because he does boost posts for um, for his blog. So uh, you know, let us know if that's something you experience. And Robert, if you can join us for 10 minutes, you're more than welcome to do so. And Corinda's saying he needs to advertise his shows. Now, on, on that basis, um, th this is something that we, we touch on in Grow Your Live Tribe. In order to get people watching your show, they have to know who you are, because this is, this is networking, this is personal for the main. Yeah. So the more people you're connected to, the more people you talk to every day and chat with every day, then the more people will watch your shows. So I, I definitely go organic first and build the audience that way. And the way to do it was the way not to do it. OK, and I'm going to touch on that for a moment because I was one of 75 people who got a very impersonal message saying, come and watch my show. In terms of the number of people who left that message, would you say a low percentage or a high percentage? A high percentage. A high percentage, because people don't like being approached anonymous. Well, in that manner, if you're going to invite people to your show, then do it individually with a message to them, because you owe them that. And if you were to invite, just for argument's sake, five people personally each week to your show, then numerically you would have 260 people who knew about your show if you did it every week for a year so yeah well i think you know and i don't see can you show me the comment from robert because i missed yeah, it. i couldn't see oh, it hang on uh robert's saying when i boost my posts my organic goes up on future posts for all the likes i get on the post and then use the hack to yeah. invite them to the page. Yeah, okay. so if you don't know this, I actually made a video so you can go on uh, um, on my media path page on Facebook and, and find this. But if you if anyone reacts to a post and react, a reaction is, you know, a, a like, a heart, a happy face, a mad face, those are reactions. So if anyone puts a reaction on your post, you can go and click on that. So if you have like 90, if it shows you like 96 uh, thumbs up, if you click on that, it'll open up all those people who reacted on your page. And there's a button there for you to, to invite them to like the page. Um, so that's yeah. the hack that, that Robert's talking about. I know that organic will go up after you've boosted something for a short window. But I don't think I think the problem is that if someone just isn't boosting regularly and say they just had, I don't know, an event that they wanted to boost. And so they event they boosted that event post on their page. And they didn't boost anything else, then they've seen their organic numbers go down. Yeah. I don't know, you know, correlation isn't causation, as they say. <laughs> so I'm not sure if that's what's happened because I haven't had the opportunity to do an experiment myself to see if that's if that's actually happening cons happening consistently with boosting posts. Right, and I, a call to action from Carlos is sorry from Alfredo. Apologies, Alfredo. Uh, Stephen Healy, watch my show or catch the replays. I'll try my best to do that. <laughs> uh, if you are, uh, can you put a link as well, Alfredo? Then everybody can actually uh, take a look at your broadcasts because from a technical point of view, they are quite well, superb. And while we're talking, you know, we always put, Stephen always puts up on the, the lower thirds, please share. If you like something, whether it's our show or a post or something else, if you like it, don't just hit the like. Don't just leave a comment. Share it. Because when you share things, that tells Facebook that you like it 
well enough to share it with your friends, which holds more weight than either a reaction or a comment. And so then Facebook will show you more of that um, or more of that type of content. So be kind of, we talked about this last week or the week before when we had Robert on, you have to be very, you know, purposeful in yeah. what you're sharing um, and use the share button. Now, I know a lot of people don't like to share because they just don't want to fill their stuff, you know, fill their page up with things that they've shared or they think their, you know, their friends aren't going to like it, but you're setting up your feed. So if you don't like what's showing up in your news feed every day, start sharing stuff that you do like. <laughs> that's, that's it. That's it. I mean, but I mean, your news feed, your own personal news feed should be a mix of, of you and your videos and also promoting other people as well. You know, a because lot of times we, we just share the, you know, the stuff that uh, the bad stuff a lot of times, you know, because for whatever reason, like, well, you know, the shooting in, in Las Vegas, for example, yeah. we're just so shocked by that. And, and, you know, we'll hit share on it because we, we want to share and let people know what's going on in the world. But then your news feed gets inundated with like all this bad news yeah. stuff. <laughs> and it's because that's what you've shared. So just be more conscious of the things that you're sharing and share the types of things that you want to fill your feed. Right. And a point from, from Robert, I have a video also about getting people to change their options to see my post being set up, then I'm boosting, mm -hmm. and then I'm boosting that. Okay, if you want to put any links, Robert, please put them in the uh, in the post. And uh, Corinda has a comment. Can I ask, do you get bad Navigate views on your shows? Um, is Navigate the word you meant to put? Uh, Corinda, because we we we're trying yeah, I'm not, to work I'm not understanding the question. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So if you, you pose pose that again, um, so wow, it's three minutes to the hour. <laughs> yeah, I know. Where did that time go? <laughs> it flew. It flew. Oh, oh right. Okay. Negative. Oh, right, right. Okay. It's probably close. Uh, Alfredo, negative views. Um, we were talking earlier about, um, what, is, go what do you mean comment. by that? I'm not sure what you mean by bad views or negative ba views. Ba bad comments, do you mean, Corinda? Yeah, if you're talking negative, we've really been fortunate and we haven't gotten, yeah. we haven't experienced that. We haven't had like any hecklers or anyone being very negative in our, um, in our comment section. So. No, we, we, we're fortunate in, in that. Um, and we, we talked earlier, there, there obviously, um, a lot of people are going to like what you do. A few people won't. Mm -hmm. And when a few people don't like what you do, then they can press the button that says, don't show me this post, don't show me any post from this page. As far as that's concerned, we have a tiny percentage of that in fact 99.9% .9 of the shows have no negative reaction whatsoever we, that's because we're not controversial yeah no <laughs> I mean that, that's that's the thing about the, the live broadcasting community it is on the whole very positive and whilst we might report uh, um, negative events we do try to empathize with the situation that people are in and work out ways that we can actually help well, and Stephen, share your your tip that you had earlier. Actually, you had it geared toward younger users, but share in case Karen or missed that, how he can block those people if they are just consistently being ugly. Oh, right. Okay. Yes. If you had, do have people who are making comments that you don't want to see anymore, uh, you don't want to see your shows, don't do anything personally. Go to your business page, and assuming that's where you're broadcasting from, Go to settings, then go to people and other pages. You can then type in their name and you can press block. They will not then be able to see any future shows, do any comments or anything. They want to have an idea that this show is on. So if you have people who are not helping the show, because let's, let's talk about this. It's not just you as the presenter. It's everybody who's in the show viewing with you has a right to view it with respect uh, to everybody. So if it, somebody is upsetting you or the people watching your show, then go to your page, go to people and places, uh, people and other pages, and just block them. That's it, done and dusted. 
Yeah, you know, they, there's an old saying that's been on the, around the internet for years and it used to apply mostly to, uh, you know, to forums, bulletin boards. It's don't feed the trolls. So the worst thing to do yeah. is respond. Just delete the comment, hide the comment, you know, block them from your page. But yeah. whatever you do, they, you know, they don't deserve your time and attention. And, and Corinne is saying now, what if, about if it's on a personal page? Uh, two points here. I used to broadcast all the shows, including Blooming for Britain, from my personal page because I, I reckoned that more people would see it because the business page wasn't very busy. And then I decided to switch over to broadcasting on a business page. And we've not looked back since because whilst it was quite in the early weeks, you build up an audience gradually and you've got greater control over things like safety, and also you get the numbers as well. You get all the analytics from Facebook. So where you can, uh, I would suggest to get control, set up a page and send people a link to the broadcast on that page. And you can wow. block people on your personal profile as well. Yep. yep. And, and just know, block those yeah. people. I mean, I don't understand. People have more time than I do, obviously, because if I don't like something, I'm just not going to watch it. I don't have time to, to argue with you or to leave your comments. <laughs> like, I have stuff better to do than that. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> indeed. But there, there are some people with, with too much time on their hands. Fortunately, we outnumber them by about 100 <laughs> to 1. But occasionally, you do need to take action. Yeah, but don't let them, don't let them affect um, your confidence in broadcasting. Uh, you know, because and just look at the numbers for every one person that you have that's going to be just, you know, they don't like you for whatever reason. Look at how many people are there and who are supporting you. So, yeah, always look at the positive side of things. Uh, this has been because it, you've been watching us a quite wonderful uh, Be Live in Five talk show. Now, this is an invite from Tina and myself. We're back at the same time next week, 12 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. in the UK. We would love you to come on camera with us, okay? If you've not been on camera before, don't worry about it. We'll take care of you. We're very friendly. We don't bite, do we? <laughs> not usually. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, but, yeah, we, we love, um, you know, we, we always have kind of an agenda. Um, doesn't always work out. Sometimes it's because the show takes a different direction or someone hops in the seat and we go in a different direction and that's wonderful. And sometimes it's because we have a guest plan and they can't be on, such as the case with yeah. Karen and wildfires, things that are out of your control. So yeah, I mean, even if we have, you know, something planned, we have a guest on, we still like to bring other people in. Steve and I are even drop down and let you guys take it. <laughs> oh yeah, truly, truly. <laughs> Um, we're, we're quite happy to produce a show with everybody, with all three slots taken by you. We can do that. We can do anything. And that's the beauty of BeLive.tv. So thank you to BeLive. I hope we won't, we'll see you before next uh, Monday. Uh, on Thursday, we're here at 12 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. in the UK. Uh, and we have to agree with this comment. And I'm going to leave this on the screen. When when Robert joins, the agenda goes out the window, and that's the way it should be. We just have it, fun. Yeah, we have fun. So I thanks to David Burrows and to uh, Robert who's joining us. Yep, joined us today. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I got confused because we have this two. Robert, the other Robert. No, no the other Robert. The other <laughs> Robert, Robert Myers. <laughs> Robert Myers. And, and a, a big shout out to Robert because he, he achieved something that is amazing. He broadcast live for a hundred days consecutively uh, as a challenge to himself, and he thoroughly enjoyed it. We enjoyed watching. We know he had one show uh, which had an incredible thirteen thousand views because he hit the right topic at the right time. Right. So, uh, Robert and David, thank you. And where can we find each other, Tina, next week? Well, it's after the show. Well, you can find us Thursday yep. with Live Trot. Um, we have a dare Friday. Right? Is a dare Friday? A dare, a dare is tomorrow. Tomorrow? Who's Friday? Uh, myself and Brigetti. Okay. 
Adair has her own show on Friday, which is what I'm thinking of. (laughs) So Adair would be live in five is tomorrow. And then she also has her own show on Friday. Uh, Of course, we'll all be here Monday for birthday bash, which we're all looking forward to. And in the meantime, go check out the be live in five course on Udemy. Um, Even if you've already taken the course or you already know how to use be live in five, um, Stephen has made an addition to the course that shows you the new agenda features. So check that out or look for um, for the standalone video. I know you probably put that out there somewhere too, didn't you? I did. I did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. The, you can see our new logo. We're adopting a new logo. Uh, looking forward. And I've frozen again. No, you're okay. I'm back. No. I'm back. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, so, as Tina says, you find us everywhere, but be live in five. We'll always find both of us. Thank you for watching. Take care, and we'll see you on Thursday and next Tuesday. Thank you for watching. Bye for now. And that's a wrap. And hopefully, in a moment.